Hello, I am Dr. Amber Gugas. And I am Dr. Andrew Green. We are part of the Sources, Detectors, and Instruments team at the Nevada National Security Site. In this presentation, we will be sharing with you our current progress on our end-to-end -end simulations of a 3-meter detector wall for neutron-diagnosed subcritical experiments. Neutron-diagnosed subcritical experiments, or NDSC for short, is a novel diagnostic capability developed by teams at the NNSS, Los Alamos National Laboratory, and Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory to measure the reactivity of subcritical experiments. NDSC utilizes a deuterium-tritium dense plasma focus pictured below to create a pulse of 14.1 MeV neutrons which are directed into a subcritical experiment. These neutrons interact in the fissile material of the subcritical experiment, creating fission neutrons and gamma rays. Since the temporal die-away rate of the fission gamma rays is directly dependent on the neutron multiplication, we can leverage time of flight separation to measure the decay of the fission gamma rays as a function of time and infer the reactivity of the subcritical experiment. We do this with a large detector wall. The NDSC gamma ray detector wall is approximately 3 meters in diameter and consists of 151 individual detector pixels. The wall is stood off from the subcritical experiment approximately 20 meters to enable the time of flight separation. The final design of the NDSC gamma ray detectors and wall was selected as part of a collaborative effort between our team at the NNSS and the detector team at Los Alamos National Laboratory. The design details were informed by many simulations coupled with materials and optical property measurements. This enabled a high fidelity simulation capability, which was not only important to the design effort, but is also pertinent to predicting the performance of the individual detectors and the whole wall. It will also aid in the analysis of actual NDSC experiments. Our simulations are designed to answer questions about design parameters, performance metrics, overall detector performance under various conditions, and understanding the data that we get from real detectors. This data could come from anything from simple benchtop measurements of a single component up to a subcritical shot with hundreds of detector elements and associated hardware. Our simulations let us look under the hood at radiation interactions with detectors in ways that are not otherwise possible. Our toolkit is made up of three modules. The first is the radiation and optical transport model in which the JANT4 library is used. Gas captures the details of all of the major parts of the detector and surrounding materials. The gas application uses Monte Carlo simulation of well-known physics to compute fission gamma interactions and subsequent optical photon interactions. From all that information, this module predicts, among other things, the time distribution, the spectrum, and the spatial distribution of the light that encounters the PMTs. Because the first module produces an idealized output, the second incorporates data from our PMT, electronics, cabling, and digitizers to convolute the previous prediction into a more realistic signal intensity versus time. The final module uses post-processing in MATLAB codes to compute many of the metrics that we need to determine performance. These include chi-squared fits to the data, full width half max of the time response, the distribution of photoelectrons per MeV deposited, the intrinsic efficiency to gammas, and other quantities. This final product is an important tool for decision making and for interpreting data. More specifically, we use JANT4 for radiation transport of the fission gamma rays into the scintillator and then optical photon transport of scintillation photons from the scintillator to the PMT photocathode. The simulation starts each event by drawing one gamma from a given energy spectrum and directing that gamma toward a random position on the front face. The gamma then enters the scintillator and according to its elemental composition, density, and gamma cross-section, the gamma scatters with one of the atoms and leaves energy usually in the form of scattered electrons. That interaction causes scintillation photons. JANT4 treats each particle separately and applies its applicable physics to generate its behavior, whether it be a gamma, a Compton electron, an optical photon, or any other. 
We have included such details as detector component geometries, material properties, surface reflectivity conditions, and optical properties. To add further realism, data from experimental measurements of attenuation lengths, refractive indices, and scintillation emission versus wavelength, and scintillation decay time were incorporated into the JANT4 model. The JANT4 library incorporates particle and nuclear physics cross-sections as well as optics to transport the incoming gammas and neutrons through the detection materials and subsequently transport the secondary particles and optical photons that are produced. The NDSC gamma ray detector components included in the model are shown here. This includes the 10 inch by 10 inch hexagonal prism scintillator coupled to a UVT truncated cone light guide, the aided eight stage photomultiplier tube, the housing components, and the detector stand. We modeled three different cases an individual detector, a 151 detector wall with only the central detector illuminated, and one 151 detector wall with the full three meter illumination. These figures are 3D renderings of the configurations as modeled in JANT4. The top right figure is the nominal hexagonal detector without the housing. This shows the scintillator, the light guide, the photomultiplier, as well as the optical couplings between them. The bottom right figure shows the current detector design with the aluminum housing. Finally, the figure on the left is the 151 detector wall with the main support plate. The material and optical property measurements used as input in our JANT4 simulations were acquired using various methods. The EJ29949 scintillation emission spectrum was measured using a Quantumaster QM807521 fluorimeter from Hariba Scientific. The plot of the scintillation emission spectrum as a function of wavelength on the top right shows a peak emission at a wavelength of approximately 390 nanometers. The EJ29949 scintillation time spectrum was measured using a floor decay system. The measured time spectrum shown in the bottom right plot was fitted using four components to determine the decay times and relative amplitudes of each individual scintillation component. The light transmission through samples of the EJ29949 scintillator, UVT PMMA, EJ500 optical cement, EJ550 optical grease, and EJ560 optical pads were measured as a function of wavelength using a Carry 5000 spectrophotometer. Two different cylindrical samples of the same material were used, one one centimeter thick and the other 10 centimeters thick. The difference in the light transmission of the two samples yield the attenuation length of the material. The Carry 5000 with universal measurement accessory was used to measure the Brewster angle of the same samples, with exception to the EJ550 optical grease. The index of refraction of each sample was obtained from the Brewster angles and then fitted with the Cauchy equation. We measured the impulse response of the Ada D798B PMT using a 70 picosecond laser perpendicular to and centered on the photocathode of the PMT. This measurement yields not only the PMT impulse response, but also includes the effects of the bias board, cabling, and digitizer. The resultant PMT-only impulse response is shown in the plot on the left. MATLAB is used to import the JANT4 outputs, perform the convolution of the JANT4 impulse response with the PMT-only impulse response, fit the data as needed, and calculate the resultant performance metrics. These metrics include the full width half maximum and the ratio of the tail to total integrals, or R tail, for the time response, and the number of photoelectrons per MeV, intrinsic efficiency, and spectrum quality factor, or Q-spec, capturing the gamma ray and photoelectron statistics. The JANT4 impulse response and the convolved impulse response for a single NDSC gamma ray detector are shown on the left in red and on the right in blue, respectively. The full width half max of the JANT4 impulse response is approximately two times larger than that of the PMT only. This indicates that the gamma ray interactions in the scintillator and subsequent transport of optical photons to the PMT photocathode dominate the impulse response of the whole detector. 
The R tail for the whole detector is 0.43. This indicates that the prompt portion of the impulse response dominates the total as opposed to the tail. This low influence tail is desirable for NDSC and for resolving the fission gamma die away rate at late times. The results of the gamma ray and photoelectron statistics performance of a single NDSC gamma ray detector are provided here. On the left is the histogram of number of photoelectrons per MeV created. This data yielded a mean number of photoelectrons per MeV of 126. On the right is the histogram of the number of photoelectrons created. This data was used to calculate Q-spec, which was equal to 1.40. The closer to a value of 1 that Q-spec is, the lower the uncertainty in the detector response to the fission gamma ray die-off distribution. The intrinsic gamma ray efficiency of a single NDSC gamma ray detector is 56.9%. This intrinsic gamma ray efficiency is reasonable for a plastic scintillator based detector. We then compared the single detector performance metrics to those of the 151 detector wall, first with only the center detector illuminated, and then second with all detectors illuminated. Recall that regardless of the number of detectors or illumination, 100,000 events were generated in each case. The differences in overall performance metrics between all three cases are insignificant. However, when you take a look at the plot of center illuminated case versus the fully illuminated case, there is a significant difference. In the fully illuminated case, the response of all 151 detectors is approximately the same. In the center illuminated case, the center detector has the highest response. As you move out from the center, the detector response decreases. This staircase distribution indicates the presence of crosstalk between neighboring detector pixels. Detectors at the same distance away from the center eliminated detector have similar responses. Note that the detector array index starts with the innermost detector and winds counterclockwise outwards. Our Gamma Array Simulation Toolkit provides the capability to perform end-to-end -end simulations of the NDSC Gamma Ray Detector Wall. With it, we have evaluated key detector performance metrics that will be used to inform how well the fission gamma ray die-off distribution from an NDSC measurement can be resolved. Furthermore, it will be able to aid in the analysis of the experimental data from an NDSC measurement by being part of a forward model. In the future, we plan to continue to improve the simulation fidelity and realism as we add more and better experimental data as inputs to our Gamma Array Simulation Toolkit. As we characterize the first NDSC Gamma Ray detectors, we will be able to benchmark this model with the experimental data that we gained.